Christ is risen. We're not saved today. There's lots to rejoice about. Thank you for coming this morning as we celebrate today. Because somebody says we don't need to be sad anymore. <laughs> and that's what today is. A few surprises along this morning. I hope you will enjoy. And not only has Christ and Lewis, but you'll notice that the Easter Bunny's been around. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, uh, I'm one of those uh, pastors who believe that not only is church serious, but church is fun. And to praise the Lord's name and to enjoy. Your service this morning is going to begin on page 97. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. O oh God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family. Through the seas you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word, you claim us as daughters and sons, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains us. And above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. And to you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our gathering hymn this morning is number 386 in the Brown Book. And as I told Carissa yesterday morning, this is my Easter when we sing this hymn. 386 in the Brown Book. Thank you. 
us the joy of celebrating our Lord's resurrection. Give us the joy of life in your service, and bring us at last to the full joy of life eternal. <laughs> Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated as we have just singing to us a special song. And Debbie, I'm sorry. <laughs> from the 10th chapter of Acts. 
Then Peter replied, I see, I see very clearly that God doesn't show partiality. In every nation, he accepts those who fear him and do what is right. I'm sure you have heard about the good news for the people of Israel. And there is peace, peace with God through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. You know what happened all through Judea, beginning in Galilee after John the Baptist began preaching. And no doubt you know that God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. Then Jesus went around doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. And we apostles are witnesses of all he did throughout Israel and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by crucifying him, but God raised him to life three days later. Then God allowed him to appear, not to the general public, but to us whom God had chosen beforehand to be his witnesses. We were those who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. And he ordered us to preach everywhere and to testify that Jesus is ordained of God to be the judge of all, the living and the dead. He is the one all the prophets testified about, saying that everyone who believes in him will have their sins forgiven through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Second lesson today is taken from, <clears throat> from Corinthians. If only for this life we have hope in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. But Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death, for since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead comes also to a man. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ all will be made alive. But each in turn, Christ the first fruits, then when he comes, those who belong to him. Then the end will come when he hands over the kingdom to God the Father after he has destroyed all dominion, authority, and power. For, the, for, the, for he must reign until he has put all the enemies under the, his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. <coughs> Please stand for the gospel, affirmation and the reading of the gospel. <laughs> Be with 
you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord. If you may, if you wish, uh, sit for the Gospel reading as it's 18 verses. And you will notice that I have reading the Gospel from the message this morning. Early in the morning, on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone was moved away from the entrance. She ran at once to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, breathlessly panting. She took the master from, they took the master from the tomb. We don't know where they put him. Peter and the other disciple left immediately for the tomb. They ran neck and neck. The other disciple got to the tomb first, outrunning Peter, stooping to look in. He saw the pieces of linen cloth lying there, but he didn't go in. Simon Peter arrived after him, entered the tomb, observed, observed the linen cloths lying there and the kerchief used to cover his face, not lying with the linen cloths, but separate, neatly folded by itself. Then the other disciple, the one who had gotten there first, went into the tomb, took one look at the evidence, and believed. No one yet knew from the scriptures that he had to rise from the dead. The dyke disciples then went back home. But Mary stood outside the tomb weeping. As she wept, she knelt to look into the tomb and saw two angels sitting there, dressed in white, one at the head, the other at the foot, where Jesus' body had been laid. They said to her, Woman, why are you weep? They took my master, she said, and I don't know where they put him. After she said this, she turned away and saw Jesus standing there, but she didn't recognize him. Jesus spoke to her, Woman, why do you weep? Who are you looking for? <clears throat> she, thinking that he was the gardener, said, Mister, if you, if you took him, tell me where you put him so I can care for him. Jesus said, Mary, Turning to face him, she said in Hebrew, Rabona, meaning teacher. Jesus said, Don't cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go to my brothers and tell them, I ascend to my Father and your Father, my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went, telling the news to the disciples, I saw the Master. And she told them everything he had said to her. My sisters and brothers, this is the gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Nurturing God, we do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from your mouth. Make us hungry for this heavenly food and pour it down upon us that the words of my lips and the meditation of our hearts may draw us closer to thee and lead us to walk in the way of life. Amen. Please be seated. <coughs> I read a story a few years back about Granny, who lived in a tiny little town. When the family visit, the aroma of all kinds of cooking would float out through the screen porch and out into the yard to greet them. There would be cream, corn, collier greens, and hopefully cornbread. They said hopefully because the one thing that Granny could not cook was biscuits. And I'm going to tell you, I'm one of them. My late husband could make the most beautiful biscuits. Don't get me to make them. <laughs> no, because they would be hockey pucks, I'm going to tell you. Apparently, she was just not a big believer in baking soda or baking powder. On those days she would decide to make baked biscuits, 
she would open the door of the wood stove, pull out what looked like a tray of toasty hockey pucks. <laughs> Her husband used to joke that if you dropped those biscuits on the floor, they would wake the dead. Thus their nickname, Resurrection Biscuits. <laughs> <laughs> so, this being Easter Sunday, I think about this granny and those little sad resurrection biscuits. But you know, I think her biscuits offer us an important Easter message. Without baking powder, without the key ingredients, those biscuits became heavy and flat. Life is like that without the resurrection. Life without Christ can be heavy and flat. We tend to think of the Easter message as a message for the end of life. Frankly, I think we need the Easter message right now. All, as many of us know, death can come long before the end of life. How many people do we know who are walking this earth physically alive but dead of spirit? How easily life can beat us down especially this past couple of years with COVID and all that we have gone through, with all its ups and downs that we are still living. It's like the little the story of the little boy with his head in his his head in his hands, staring at his school book saying, I wish my arithmetic was gone and that I was married and dead. <laughs> It's easy to celebrate the resurrection of the body on this glorious Easter Sunday, but what about the resurrection of the spirit? What about tomorrow morning when the alarm clock goes off and our spirits sink? Where is the resurrection then? Where is the resurrection when people work night and day in a thankless job, especially our frontline workers for the past couple of years, coping with the spread of the virus, and they're still dealing with it. Where is the resurrection when our partner, child, or grandchild gets caught in an ugly cycle of drugs, alcohol, bullying, and different types of abuses, and we watch them slip away on us? <clears throat> Where is the resurrection when we see our loved ones battle cancer or any other disability disease where is the resurrection when we wake up one morning and realize nothing matters to us anymore where is the resurrection when we continue to wear masks and try to social distance where is the resurrection when the end of life our family and friends are all gone and we're left alone to know negotiate in a world that does not really honor its seniors. Where is the resurrection then? Well, it's just not remembered resurrection after death that we talk about. It is resurrection during the life. Like biscuits without baking powder, life without the re resurrection can be heavy and flat. But today I say, we bring that missing ingredient back. Our Easter story from John is a familiar one. Mary goes to the tomb while it is still dark. She finds the stone rolled away and Jesus' body gone. Weeping, she looks inside the tomb and sees two angels. Woman, why are you weeping? And she says, they took my Lord away. I don't know what they've done with him. But then she turns around, and Jesus is standing there. At first she didn't recognize him. And he says, woman, why are you crying? Sir, Mary said, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him. Mary, Jesus says, and it's the way he said her name. You hear your name. 
Parsa, Jeff, Sadie, Jim. Do you hear your name? And it's a way it said. Mary realizes that this stranger standing before her was the risen Christ. Mary recognized the living Christ. She recognized that life force in their midst. And that's exactly the way it should be with you and me. We have the risen Christ right here in front of us. We have a life force in our midst. And that's the missing ingredients we must reclaim. Just like the story of a woman who decided to take a vacation to the Death Valley. Because apparently in the Death Valley it gets very little rain. And this particular year, it got a few more inches of rain than it normally did. And she had to go because something marvelous had happened. Because when she went, Death Valley was full of color. Desert gold, blazing stars, poppies, Eden primrose. It had blossomed. The little seeds that were covered, the little seeds that were hidden and dormant came alive with a little bit of rain. The missing ingredient to bring it back to life. That's what happens to us if we allow the missing ingredient to come back. There is still life in each one of us. We just need to find it. We just need to bring it back. And that ingredient is Jesus. A pastor told a story about a Saturday before her first Easter sermon, she was walking around her neighborhood trying to walk off some nerves. Towards the end of their walk, she stopped by the local deli to get some coffee. Are you ready for the big service? There, Hannah said. She nodded tentatively and said, I guess. I'm pretty nervous, though. The owner looked at her and said, Oh, you'll be fine. Just get out of the way and let Jesus do the work. Good reminder even for me. Let Jesus do the work. Those words she had never forgotten. For it is not only great advice for a sermon, but great advice for life. And I can tell you, they are great words, like I said, for me. Get out of the way and let Jesus do it. Let Jesus take over. We do put a lot of blocks up, don't we? We don't allow the Spirit to work. We don't allow the Spirit to come in and move us. Sometimes we don't recognize what it is, but the things we may put up, anger, being negative, fear, doubt, things that shut us up, weigh us down, things that keep that key ingredient of life and spirit from working in our hearts. It's like the, an author said, God can't clean the house of you with you in it. Deep down, the human spirit yearns for joy, yearns to soar, Kind of like the Mary Poppins movie. Remember that movie where Uncle Albert was in that vault and it was stiff and he started to laugh. And when he laughed, he floated and floated and he floated. And when the others started to laugh, they floated and they floated within. Are we missing that joy? Are we missing that when we can float? Because I've said to you, and you've heard me say it over and over again, we can be serious in church, but church is to be full of joy. You've come to know that with me. I believe in joy. I believe in laughter. I believe in that. Because with that, our spirit just lifts. Our spirit can be full of the joy. 
and we soar. There's a life to the service. So that missing ingredients is Jesus there. Is Jesus here amongst us right now? Easter gives us a second chance, a chance to see the life force in the midst, a chance to recognize the risen Christ right in front of us, a chance to start again. We thank God for bringing us to another glorious <coughs> Easter. And I will tell you a small story about mine. I have walked away from the church for 25 years because I just didn't like it. All the do's and the don'ts and the negativeness and the bitching and the backbiting, you all know it, and there. But I was called back to the church when I went and I allowed Christ to walk with me and I walk with him. It was about a month later, a month and a half, my husband said, you're different. <laughs> okay. He said, no, he said, you used to be kind of full of anger, or you were just sort of black, but now, he said, your step is light. Your step, there's a joy. My friends, that's Christ, because I allowed Christ to come back into my life. Now, there's people who won't believe that, but that's okay. It's okay. But for me, there was such a joy. And when my husband recognized it, I knew there was a difference. <coughs> and then a couple weeks later, my mother said the same thing on the phone. There's something different about your voice. Jesus. Jesus gives us that life. And may you, this Easter, Put the missing ingredient back into your life. Amen. Amen. <clears throat>
service will continue on page 104 with the Nicene Creed. <coughs> We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, the Maker of heaven and earth, and of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and the kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. <clears throat> for the prayers of the people, you may stick if you wish. <clears throat> Offertory hymn, 364. Oh, is that? 
Offertory hymn number 364. Thank you. 
It is indeed right and our duty and our joy. Almighty and merciful God, for the great, glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying he destroyed death, and in rising he has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join your unending hymn. Holy, holy.
God, in the mystery of Christ's resurrection, you sent light to conquer darkness, water to give new life, and the bread of life to nourish our people. Send us forth as witnesses to your Son's resurrection, that we may show your glory to all the world, through Jesus Christ our risen Lord. Amen. Please be seated as Jesse now brings us special music. <laughs> Small print is not good. We were hoping this morning, or mom and dad were hoping that they might get here, but it didn't, uh, was not to be, not today. So I'm gonna do this especially for them, and uh, also to my firstborn child who's having a birthday today.
forth into the world, rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah! Hallelujah.